In this video, I'm going to show you how to assemble and analyze ion torrent paradigm data. And in this example, we're going to align genomic sequence data from an E. coli DH10b to a curated reference sequence. As with any next-gen assembly, I'm going to start by setting up my assembly in Seekman Engine. So from the welcome screen, we'll select Create New Assembly Project. And this is a genome assembly. We'll keep this set to Templated Assembly. And now I need to name my project and choose a project folder where all my files will be saved. I have a folder set up with my data, so I'll choose that. Then I need to input my template file. And as I mentioned, I'm going to use the DH10B chromosome. Then the next step is to load my sequence data. Now I can load these reads as unpaired or single end or paired end. And if I choose single end, then Seekman Engine will assemble all the reads as single sequences. Before we go on, let me show you what that would look like. Here I have a finished assembly open in Seekman Pro where I treated my paired end data as single end. And you can see here in the strategy view that the assembly coverage is roughly 200x. And if we take a look at the SNP report, we can see that with the default filters, we have about 19,000 SNPs reported. And remember that these data are assembled against a curated reference sequence for E. coli DH10b. So really we'd expect to see few if any SNPs reported here. Even if I change the PNOT ref value to 95 to filter out lower probability SNPs, I still have about 11,000 SNPs reported. And let's just quickly take a look at one of these SNPs. So here we have a SNP called in the CDS PCM. And you can see my reference base is a C and roughly half the reads also call C, but the rest of them show a gap here. And since this was loaded as single end data, the paired end reads in each direction are treated as distinct reads with equal weight in the alignment. So getting back to our assembly setup in Seekman Engine, we'll choose Ion Torrent for the read technology, and then we'll set these reads up as paired end by clicking the Add button next to Set Up Paired Reads. Just grab the files then, and then I'm prompted to define my insert size. For this data set, I know that is 100 base pairs. Set that and then click OK. And then we'll go to the next page and we'll check haploid for genome ploidy. Other than that, we don't need to change any of the assembly options because Seekman Engine has already optimized these parameters for an ion torrent paired end genome assembly. So now Seekman Engine is showing the preview of my script and I can click assemble. So here I have my completed paired end assembly open in Seekman Pro. And again, we'll start by looking at the strategy view. And here you can see that the assembly coverage is roughly 100x. And this is about half of what we saw in the single end assembly. And this makes sense because what Seekman Engine has done is taken each pair of reads and using quality data created a consensus for each pair. And this consensus read corrects for some of the errors that may occur in individual reads. And to get a better idea of that, we'll look at the SNP report again. And using the default filtering, we have 62 SNPs. And remember, with these settings, we had over 19,000 SNPs in the unpaired assembly. And as I did before, I'm going to change the PNOT ref value to 95. And now I only have 22 SNPs. Remember, with these settings in the other assembly, we had over 11,000. Now let's take another look at the alignment view. Here I've opened the alignment view to the position we were looking at before. Here you can see that with the paired end correction, there are no gaps in any of the reads at this position. Remember, about half of these reads were gapped in the single end assembly. So this makes it really easy to see how Seekman Engine's handling of paired end ion torrent data improves the assembly accuracy. If you have further questions about assembling or analyzing ion torrent paired end data, or any other questions about our software, please visit our website at dnastar.com or contact us at support at dnastar.com.